Oh. We got tips. What's good, Power Director peeps? It's Saturday, and today I got a special treat for you. I decided to join up with my good friend Jim from the Sharper Turtle to bring you guys a few tips and tricks for Power Director. If you're new to my channel and you want to learn how to use Power Director, click on the subscribe button and click on the bell to get notifications every time I upload content to YouTube. If you've been waiting to see a Power Director collaboration on YouTube, I want you to put hashtag Power Director Tips in the comment section below. Hello, my name is Jim, and I'm the creative force behind the Power Director tutorials you'll find on the YouTube channel known as the Sharper Turtle. I've developed that channel as a place where I can explore with you all the tools that are available inside of CyberLink Power Director, and a place where we can explore some techniques to improve the quality of our video editing. My philosophy is to make the lessons short and to the point. I am thankful that Malik's given me the opportunity to be part of this larger video, and so I'd like to share a tip on a subject that I have lots of hits on, related to how did you make it look as though the camera is slowly moving across the still image. This has been nicknamed the Ken Burns effect. Now you can accomplish this one of many ways. Some are simple, some are complex. I'd like to share a method that I think is the most effective for beginning and intermediate video editors. I'm going to take this still image I have in the media room and drag it down to track number one. I'm going to make it larger, longer, by clicking on the clock above. I like this for precision. I'll drag across the value for seconds and change that to 18. Press Enter. Now with that highlighted, I'm going to click on the Tools button above the timeline and choose the Pan and Zoom option. It forces me to widen what I have here on the recording screen to see all the options. I can pick almost any one to start with. I'll simply choose one that says horizontal right, and it will apply that to my image. So when I play that, you see it slowly moves straight from left to right. That's not exactly what I want, so I'm going to modify that. The best way to do that is click on the Motion Designer button on the left panel at the bottom. With that selected, now I'm going to work out of my Magic Motion Designer. Let's start by taking this and making it a little bit smaller. I can take any of the four corners and drag in. And then I'll drag it to the lower left. Now we have these nice pink lines that appear when we're at the edge of our frame. I have two keyframes to start with, one at the beginning and one at the end. And if I don't do anything, it will simply move from one to the other. But I want a little more indirect motion. So I'm going to click about in the middle, and then I'll click on the diamond with the plus. That will add a keyframe. Now I need to tell it where I want the camera to focus. I'm going to shift it slightly to the right. So we're going to move up the waterway toward the building. Now I'm going to pick the last keyframe by clicking the arrow pointing to next keyframe. And since I have three, it takes me to the end. Now here it curves a little bit back to the left. I'm going to move the mouse over the blue ball in the center and put it right in the middle. I'm also going to tighten up the image a little bit this time by shrinking it just slightly. So I've affected both the location and the magnification. I'll click on OK. Now with that done, we'll play the finished product. I'll press my space bar. And we see now we're slowly moving a little bit to the right, but also up a bit. And then we continue that fluid motion as we go up and slowly zoom in on the building. And you can add as many keyframes with as many motion changes as you want in this particular technique. But it's a very nice way to simply make it look like the camera is zooming in or moving across the still image. 
I want to thank Malik for asking me to be part of this video and share my tips with PowerDirector. Don't forget to check me out at the Sharper Turtle for more PowerDirector tutorials. You know who it is, PD peeps. It's Malik from PowerDirector University. I'm all about creating PowerDirector tutorials that are fun, engaging, and easy to follow so that you can create awesome content for your viewers. The tip I'm going to share involves the sample clips that are loaded when you open PowerDirector. If it gets on your cotton picking nerves to remove these sample clips from the library every time you want to get your edit on, I got your back. I'm going to show you two simple ways to deal with this situation. The first option is to disable this feature within the program. So you want to go up here to preferences. Then you want to go down to project. And you want to uncheck where it says automatically load sample clips when PowerDirector opens. Then you want to click on OK. So if you close out PowerDirector and you open PowerDirector back up, those sample files are no more voila so let's go ahead and enable that again because we got to have that in place just to prove to you because i know how you guys are that the files are there let's open this back up and the files will show up again Now let's talk about option two for dealing with these pesky little sample files. So let's say you have a intro or some type of clip or image that you use in every single project, like your logo or a lower third, or like I said, an intro, you can replace the sample clips with your own files. That way, every time you open up power director, your files are there ready to go for your next edit. So let me show you how to do that. We're going to need to close this out. And now we need to remove the files from the sample clips folder. So we're going to go ahead and open up a file explorer window. And we're going to go to our C drive. We're going to go to program files. We're going to go to cyberlink. You want to go to your version of power director. So for this tutorial it's power director 18. And then you want to find the folder called sample clips. Now these are those sample clips that open up every time you open the program. So we got to pull them out of this folder, but do not delete these files. Keep them in a separate location. The reason why I say that is because whenever you request technical support, the representative is going to ask you to use these sample files to do the troubleshooting. So right now we're going to just go ahead and click in here. We're going to do control a, which will select all of these files. I'm going to right click one of the files and select cut. Then we're going to go to where we want to move these files. And we're going to right click and do paste. Now it's telling me that I need administrative permission. So I'm going to go ahead and click on continue. I'm going to click on do this for all so that it just runs through and does them all. So now I have all the files that are just on a different drive so I can go back to it whenever I need to. Now what I want to do is go to a location where I have a file that I want to use whenever power director opens. So it could be a bunch of files. It could be one file, whatever. So let's go here. I'm going to copy this file and I'm going to go back to the location of the sample clip. So that was the local disk C program files, cyberlink, the version of power director that you're on and sample clips. So I can right click and paste all the files that I want to use in here. Once again, I need to say I have administrator permission. And now I can go ahead and close this out. And if I go back and open power director, I'm 
Voila. My intro file is in there and it will show up every time I access the program. So now you can go ahead and place any of your files that you use on the regular into that sample clips location so that they're available every time you open up the program. I want to thank Jim for joining me in this video and for being a leader in the Cyberlink Power Director community. Please head over to the Sharper Turtle on YouTube to subscribe to his channel. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, do that as well. This way you'll get all of the Power Director love you can handle from two of the best in the business. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.